Okay. All right, everybody, go ahead and make yourself uh, comfy in your seat. Make your way back to this, your seat. All right. So, all right. So uh, this this session is is based on the book that I, that just came out. They must go. The reason why I wrote this book is because there there were some things that I needed. I felt like I needed personally to address with the students that involved understanding the root causes of some of the things that you would term as being, un, uh, you know, needing deliverance, okay? So, um, I, want, I wanna go towards the source of something to, f to fix something. I, I want to, to cut off the source of something. I don't wanna just cosmetically get rid of a wasp nest. I want them all to die. I don't want them to have to rebuild again. So there's a lot of like characteristics of demons that match some of the tenacity of, of some of the wildlife and insects and things like that. Um, there's, a, there's a tenacity that's built in, thank you, to um, the demons and there's reasons why this, this is like this. Uh, for instance, they're very territorial. Demons are very territorial. So they fight each other. They don't like other demons coming into their territory. And so if you travel a lot, which I had, uh, Kathy and I noticed that we could go cross certain lines, boundary lines. And um, those demons, that we could feel like uh, an harassment. And we would be in warfare and we would be praying and fasting and you know, like, like if we were gonna do it for this, this particular, what, what we do for, we try to have a week off and we try to um, spend time praying and fasting and studying for, for this particular weekend so that you can benefit from it in a greater way. But what happens is, is a lot of times there's warfare going on. There's like what we call buffeting. And there also are things that are sent in to harass you, to slow you down, break your momentum. And um, if you're if you're not um, if you're not like diligent right now in understanding what I'm saying, you need to sh you need to shape up within the, the hour. You, you've got you've got to start to see that like all the media is producing movies and things so that it becomes like a fantasy. That's to program you into thinking that this is all fantasy. These things hate you and want to kill you and they really exist. Like a former president, they're very bad people. <laughs> very bad. Not like you. So you gotta, you gotta, like I said last night, you gotta draw the lines and you got to realize that your enemy wants you dead. One doesn't want you to, to succeed at anything and you're dealing with these entities. So we realized that at times, we looked at each other and we knew where the boundaries were in the spirit for that region. So we knew that if we could get in a car and drive to that line and go across it, it usually involved a body of water or a bridge or a road or uh, even signs and things like that, actual signs and things. Uh, is this too much for people? Okay, we would go there, and I mean, those demons that had been assigned to harass us with this intangible type of thing, and sometimes it was, there was manifestations of it, but for the most part, it was just this gnawing, and I, I said, we, we, we would call them hound dogs. We got a hound dog. We got a hound dog on us. And so in order to throw them off of us, we knew that they couldn't cross lines because the other demons are there waiting and they are territorial. That's why they would say, don't send us out of the area. That's why they told you, don't send us out of the area. So you gotta know where these lines are, where you live and where your church is and where, you know, everything about what you do. If you wanna pick a fight with the devil in your region, then you gotta do something in your region. 
if you want, if you want to experience what I'm, I've experienced, and you know, every, and I'm in a different city every hour at my job. I was at a different city every hour, so these demons couldn't follow me around. So I was encountering different spiritual atmospheres every hour at Southwest Airlines. Every hour. When I stayed in the hotel, every demon in that hotel came to my room, and I'm not kidding you. Everything that had ever been done in that room, I felt. <laughs> if I prayed in tongues in that room for, for more than a certain amount of time, there would be screaming in other rooms. There would be pounding on the walls and pounding on my door. There would be people coming to move me because they said, you're not supposed to be in this room. I'm like, too late now. I'm already camped out. And I have to have eight hours sleep and you're about to infringe on that, which means I can't fly. Are you gonna pay my pay tomorrow? Cause I can't fly, I'll be illegal if I don't have rest. So you wanna move me, call my company. I'm like, what is going on? They try to squeeze you out. Okay, so Kathy and I would go, we knew where the boundaries were, or if we flew, we'd fly there. And it, they would, they would, at that point, they would not go any further. It would just poof. All of a sudden, the heavens would just open up. Everything was just, and, and the people were different. Everything was different. So this is happening, this happens here. As soon as I get on the ground, I make sure that my staff handles everything, because if not, I will encounter I will encounter head on every individual as I step off the airplane, I start to say, I need this much fuel, it's going in the hangar, um, Kathy's gonna pay for this, we'll be back on Sunday. We're gonna do an air show, you know, this time, have this airplane out, and that's what we do. Okay, but the minute, when I start to talk, there's like, you run into this attitude. With, I'm like, wait a minute, I just pulled up, I saw you being nice to that other airplane as I was pulling up. So, stay here for the weekend. The devils know who we are. We just lived not that long, far from here for, for many years. They know who we are. They're like, they're back. Yeah, yeah, we're back, yeah. So they, they, don't, do, they, don't, do, they don't mess around because they kind of know how it goes. They end up getting beat up. Okay, but after a couple days, you're going to notice some things. And then you, you get on the plane. Everybody's really nice because they want you to go. The demons do. So uh, the people are really nice. They're like pushing your airplane out. Here, here's some free fuel. Just get out of here. Uh, I'm serious. Is this, you realize I've gone to airports and Sven calls me. He goes, they lost our airplane. I go, what do you mean they lost our airplane? I said, they don't know where it is. I go, how do you lose a jet? So we don't go back there anymore. I go, well, I'll go find it, but I'm not ever coming back here. But anyway, they found it. They, they got with the system. Now, when we get back home, as soon as I get on the ground in my hometown, they're back. The demon's like, they're back. Oh yeah, we're back. I'm gonna be here for a week. So we'll get in the house. We'll sit down and you'll feel this like shifting and changing because you've, you've gone from one environment to another. You've gone from uh, one war zone to another war zone. And there's some things that are familiar with you and there's some that are not. Okay, the thing that you want is like what happened in Germany. When we went to Germany for the first time, we met in a building, nice building, but they, they, they got to where there was, more, there was too many people outside not being able to get in, so they transferred us over to a bigger convention site type of facility, and we filled that. There were people standing outside. They opened the windows so they could stand outside and hear me speaking. 
So it went from a couple hundred people to over 500 people. Okay, so I'm standing up here talking just like this. And all of a sudden, I said, I, in the name of Jesus, I drive you out. I mean, it, the Spirit just came on me, had nothing to do. Well, it all has everything to do with the gospel, but not what, you know, my ni nice little message, you know. When I said that, when I said that, everybody but just a couple, a handful of people bowed over, started choking, not coughing, choking, were on the floor expelling demons. And I said to the Lord, what just happened? He said, those demons have never been addressed with such authority. So they were in Christians, which I didn't even really, wasn't even sure about. <laughs> but you got a bunch of people blown, bow, bowed over. And he realized that in certain countries, they've never been exposed to the authority of Jesus Christ, not the message. I'm not talking about the message, I'm talking about the authority that's behind the message, is that demons know from where you're speaking from. So you're expelling demons, you're driving them out because the kingdom of God is active in you and you have been brought into a territory and they don't know who you are, but they know they have to listen. Many, many things happened over there. During that service, days later, four days later, I had a line up here. I was praying for each individual, prophesying over, laying hands on them. Don't get any ideas because I'm not doing that. <laughs> God told me to do that. So I got, it was about right down here. And the, the interpreter was right beside me. We haven't seen those. Oh, you need, need to get connected with those people again. Okay, so she's right here. We had, all these people are laid out. I didn't push them either. So you got, what was about, over half, right? Where's it done probably, right? Okay. Now my angel had not shown up. No, Angel's always with me, but he got held up at, at the passport place, I guess. I don't know. I mean, we went through all this stuff, you know, like a questioning, like, you know. They're like really mean, you know. And I'm like, well, welcome to your country, I guess, you know. Well, anyway, my angel, I always sense my angel with me. He doesn't talk to me, I don't talk to him. He just, he stands beside me and it activates me into a realm that I couldn't operate on my own. If he's there, it's different than when he's not there. I still have the Holy Spirit, I have the gifts of the Spirit, I have you, I have everybody. Everything's fine, but when he's there, it takes me into a place that I can't get there by myself for some reason now. Anyway, and it's all my fault. It's not the angel's fault, it's not God's fault, it's not your fault. It's just that all of us have to break through and, and understand dominions and domains and, and own it. That's why if you serve God for 40 years, it's more what you carry. It's more about what you carry from do domain to domain. Is that too much? Okay. I don't care anyway, so. No. <laughs> So I turned like this because I'm, I'm feeling the, the, draw, the drain of doing this, operating under just an anointing and the authority, but, but no help, no angelic help. And it's okay if you don't believe this way, I don't either, it just happens. But this, everybody saw it, it's on film, a flash came and that angel streaked across and could, came and stood by me. And when he did, he knocked the interpreter over, he knocked me over and the rest of the line fell. And I, you can hear me say, well, it's about time you got here. That's what I said. That has never happened again. That was like almost eight years ago, seven years ago. Now he's standing here right now listening to me tell the story. 
But he hasn't, he is not doing anything. He sent to minister for me. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it. Okay, so it's more about what you carry and then how you can transfer from one territory to the other. It's how you operate. Can you go to work from your house? When you transfer from your house to work, you're going into a war zone. If, if you're like some people, you have a war zone in your house and work's actually better. But they're war zones, they're domains. So you have to own your house. You have to bring peace to your house. You have to take authority over your house. You have to let everybody know that we're gonna serve the Lord. We're not gonna act like idiots. You don't do unauthorized purchases, children. You, you come through your parents. You, everything is decently in order. It's just the way it is, you know? And if you want to buy your own house and pay your own bills, We'll, we'll actually drive you to the property. If you want to pay your own bills, we'll, we'll set you up. You, you tell the kids, listen, under my house, you're going to be, you know, under, we're going to serve the Lord, and this is how we're going to do it. And you train them that way, and then they just line up. And then they get treats and snacks and rewards for, for doing it right. Okay? But when you go from one area, if you're called to a house, like my friend, Dr. Doss, that you might have known from here. I taught in a college here and he taught the class before me and I would show up and I'm like, yeah, I gotta I got follow him, you know. This guy's like the Apostle Paul. So he goes to Pakistan and he has like hundreds of thousands of people show up. And the, and the terrorists are planning on bombing the place every time he comes over there. So he goes, you know, you wanna come? I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. He goes, you'll preach to 500,000 people. I'm like, you know what? If I stay here, I stay alive, you know? That's what, I'd rather just preach to my wife, you know? We're good, we're good. No, he would go there, and this is what he said. He said he would, this, he was a man of God. How many knew Dr. Doss? Yeah. There was no question, he was like Derek Prince. If you ask the devil, do you know Dr. Doss? The, The devil would start crying. Okay, he said he would get asked to come into these Muslims' houses because they're having all kinds of uh, demonic uh, entities in there, stuff moving around, all this, you know, cancer jumping from one person to another and all this stuff, you know, all the things the devil does. And he he said, um, he stepped into this house. He said, the house, he said, out of his mouth, he said there was over 30 cats in that house. And he said when he stepped into the house, every cat at the same time turned around and started growling at him at the same time. And he knew the demons were in the cats. They weren't in the dogs, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I just, I, mean, I don't want to lose any partners, you know, over cats. So. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. He goes, that the demons were even in the animals. And he said, um, there were times where he would go to the idol that was in the house and rip it, which you don't do, rip it off the wall, rip it out of its stand, and the lights would go out and all uh, things would start leaving. And then the, the people would get free. It was the idol. It was the, it w- that was the the thing that the demons had attached themselves to as as having a right to be there. Is this too much? It better not be. No more Kool-Aid for you. (laughs) Okay, so dominions and domains and you going from territory to territory. If you look in your book and you read that book, it's, I, I go in the foundational part of this with deliverance with what people, should be doing first and are not doing. They should be having this class first before you get into actual deliverance, self-help. Because I found that if you do this course first, the demons usually just leave and you don't have to clean up vomit or have to talk to the devil for four hours. And then you don't have the devil come back, which is the big one. Okay, did you hear what I just said? 
You can forget the vomit part if you want. But get, it, get this down. You go for the root. You go for the reason why they're there in the first place. You destroy the nest so they can't come back. You go for the head honcho. You, you tell the demons, I want to talk to the head honcho. And if they keep mouth off, you say, I don't want to talk to you. Get me your boss. See, you want to go for the strong man. And you have to understand that these are territorial. So when you're dealing with people that have demons in them, you have to remember that when Lester Summerall told me that when he, in class, he, when he went to Manila because no one could cast the devil out of that girl that they had in prison, he said, I can't mess this up. He's within 10 feet of me. He said that he fasted for three days, got on a plane, went over there because no one could cast it out. He said when his foot, one foot stepped out of the car onto the parking lot, which was way far away from the inner court where this lady was being held in and solitary. He said when his foot touched down, he could hear her and the demons screaming in the inner court from the parking lot. It's, the devils knew when he stepped his foot on the parking lot. So why do you need your buckets? I'm getting you to think. I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad. Yes, I do. No, I don't. I don't want you. I want you to know that you can walk in authority, but it's authority that is established where the domains and dominions know your walk. You're walking in this. You want to become like Enoch. You want to become like the patriarchs. You want to become like the people that you almost worship, Wigglesworth and John D. Lake. You, 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 want, you want to be like them. But they did not waste time with the devil. But see, we've been taught in churchianity to put them up as being fivefold and all this, you know, all these. And they're really, really, a lot of people are no-fold. I mean, I just want to see one fold, just anything. <laughs> do you have anything? Do you have a crease? Do you have, like, do you want me to, like, help you? No, in other words, we put it off on the fivefold when it says believers shall cast out demons. Do you, uh, we're to address the demons. The fivefold is supposed to address us. They're supposed to build us up. That's what Paul said in, in fourth chapter of Ephesians. Build us up into the unity of the faith and maturity. Till we reach maturity. And so we don't have unity and we don't have maturity, so you know who to blame. Because that's their job. Your job, it says, so that the body, Paul says, could go out and fulfill their ministry. You're supposed to be the ministers. That goes over well, because I just, I've just like nixed a lot of jobs. You know, the prophet and the apostle, you know. <laughs> well, maybe you should go back to work. Be a prophetic subway person. Be a prophetic subway sandwich man. Extra mayonnaise, you know. Prophesy to that salami, you know. Paul, Paul, Paul worked. All right, so these people walked in this authority. Jesus didn't look for confrontation. It happened. These people didn't go looking for demons. They just ran into them on their way. Jesus ran into demons on his way to where he was going. He was being sent. He was in transition through domains and dominions. And when you get out of the boat, bammo. He's trespassing to those demons. Do you get that? That's what's happening with you. What are you doing in Phoenix? What are you doing in Arkansas? They're territorial. Okay, so you're, you're territorial. It's like, I want the whole earth. Okay, so he said, 
he, they took him in to all these different pla- gates and things and they finally got in the inside. And he said what he saw was a, I don't know if it was even a 100 pound girl, throwing six guards around in the air, like, 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 like uh, scarecrows. I don't know what he said. It was something like a just flimsy. He said something, they were, he was, she was throwing them in the air. And she, she, he said that he, there were claw marks, three, three claw marks, and cuts all over her, and there was hair from this thing on her with saliva and bite marks. Bite marks, saliva, hair. He said, you gotta go. And the demons left. And it was like an earthquake. He said, I only fasted three days. He said, based on what they told me, I thought I was gonna be there for days. So I didn't book my flight, my return flight, fast enough. So I was stuck there. So he said, I mean, this is not a story from the fireside chat. This is him teaching at Rama. He said, I, I told my manager, what are we gonna do? He goes, well, your flight doesn't leave until this day, so let's just go play golf. So that's what they did. And Lester Summerall said, no, he's not saying he's a bad golfer, but he said, um, I got up to the first hole, I swung, it went the whole way to the hole and went in. That's what he said. He said that happened three times. By hole three, he turned to his manager and he said, this is what he said, I'm not wasting this anointing on golf. Book a meeting tonight. And that's how the revival broke out in Manila. Okay, what he told me, he told our class was this, is that what was in her was the head honcho over Manila. So when that was broken, the whole city was free. The anointing that was on him caused his golf game to be supernatural. See, to me, that is what Jesus hung on the cross for. And I think that the narrative that we've been given is is causing us to not reach it because we've been told it's just for certain people. So you're just supposed to work really hard and give your offerings to the fivefold. But Ananias and Sapphira's uh, actual, the offering that they were giving was not to leave the building, it was given to the poor. If you look, they had an offering where they, they, they sold things and laid at the feet of Peter and then was distributed to poor. It actually says that. It says it was laid at the feet of the apostles, which is what all the prosperity people say. And they say, I'm an apostle, so lay it at my feet. But if you keep reading the next verse, it changes everything, which is why they skip that. It says that it was distributed to the poor. So it was not supposed to leave the building. Okay, so that's why it was really sacred. It was a sacred offering because it wasn't required for them to do it. And you were doing something for somebody as a goodwill. And so you didn't need to lie about it. And they could have said anything. They could have said the truth, it wouldn't have mattered. But they lied. And it was a sacred thing. Judas, that table represents the communion table. That was communion. When Judas ate unworthily, he drank he drank judgment on himself and on the body. And that's why Paul says what he says. Don't drink unworthily. Judge yourself lest you be judged. He said, this is why some of you die early or sick. When's that been preached? It's the mill of the heels. Okay, so when, when Ananias and Sapphira died, the way they did, it's because they didn't discern the sacredness of what was going on. When, when Judas did what he did and we was judged the way he was, it was because it was a sacred thing that he, did, he wasn't discerning the body. The Ananias and Sapphira were not discerning the body. The, the man in 1 Corinthians that had taken his father's wife away from him and was living with her, 
he said, turn that one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his soul may be saved in the day. These are all scriptures that everybody's afraid of. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of any, any scripture. Just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that it's not valid and, 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 and truth. It's just because just you don't understand something doesn't make it go away. Okay, so he, he said, when I am present with you in spirit and the Holy Spirit is there with you. Oh, that's, that's big. So Paul had the ability to be there in spirit as an apostle. And he said, when the Holy Spirit is there and I am there in spirit, turn this one over to Satan. And then you see in 2 Corinthians that repentance came. So it says, bring him back in. He hadn't died. They brought him back in in 2 Corinthians. You know that, right? Okay, so. All these decisions that were made by people, the church had to compensate and make decisions that were very uncomfortable because Paul said this sin that this, this young man is doing against his father has not even done in the world. And it had to do with the fact that the church was being slandered as not being effective because that's what I heard at work. You know, like, what do you have that I don't have? You know, all you guys are fake anyway. And I heard it all the time. I go, well, how am I fake? I'm, you, you, you know, I just bought you dinner. I don't have to do that. I, I, just, I just handed out burgers to people on the streets. And I'm, I show up for work. I do my job. You know, how can I be fake? It's like, well, you know, you Christians. I'm like, who, who are you talking to? And what it was is they said, well, they're living with their girlfriend. Uh, they're doing this and that. They go drinking with me and they get drunk. And, you know, they're with somebody that's not their wife or their husband. I, I hear it all, you know, and I see it all. And I'm like, well, yeah. And, and all these people were Christians and they were doing all this stuff. And I go, well, yeah, but I don't. If you notice, I don't go out. I don't do any of that stuff. And I wanted to. I was single. But I thought if I do something that can help someone else, it could offset the pain of what I'm having, of being alone, of not feeling like I'm in ministry. I felt like I was disqualified by being at my job. And I ended up, I had to do my job and everybody else's job a lot. So I was working a lot. I stayed afterwards to clean the plane. Everybody, uh, the plane is dark, everybody's gone, and I'm like, I'm still cleaning the plane. Um, there's sometimes where there was uh, unaccompanied minors that the parents never showed up. So I had to sit there with them until I could find somebody to sign them off. And sometimes we had to take them to the hotel with us and feed them until the parents like, we have to find the parents. They didn't show up. Okay, so I learned that it's better it's better to go the way of being alone and establishing your walk in the spirit than to be with people that you're not supposed to be with that can corrupt you. And it's better to be single than be married if it's the wrong person you're gonna marry anyway. And people change too, so you have to know that, that you can't control somebody from going rogue. So you, they have to have character. If you have to wait till the last two years of your life to get married, at least you're going to have a character and you're going to, you know, you only have two years instead of what, 40 years of trying to figure out what's going on. And so Kathy and I were prepared ahead of time because the, no, no one else could handle what we got to handle. Yeah. Mate, you, don't, you don't even want to know. There, everybody wants us to be here except the devil, but there's a lot of devils. So they consider it a threat for people who know what's going on and can see in the spirit to be going from territory to territory and talking about the goodness of God and, and teaching people correctly so that they function in every situation. You shouldn't feel left alone in any situation. Jesus Christ should prepare you for every kind of demonic entity, every kind of encounter. You should be able and well-versed. Now, as far as, uh, as, far as uh, pushing past a certain boundary like Enoch, I found that the Lord said, you know what? I tell the Lord, listen, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I want healed. I, I'm, I don't seem to be getting my healing. But you know what? 
to my last breath, I'm going to serve you. And then you get healed. It's just the weirdest thing, you know? And it's like you're trying to hold on to your money, and then finally you just say, we can have it all, even though you only got six cents left. You finally <laughs> give it to the Lord, you know? It's like, thanks a lot, you got six cents. It whittled down to that. But when you do that, all of a sudden, the finance is just released. So it's the same thing with relationships. You know, like, I'll, I've told her, I'll go alone, alone the rest of my life. Next thing you know, I met Kathy. I asked, I, I begged and cried to, to be able to quit Southwest every day for 30 years. When I finally said, you know what, Lord, I'm good. I'm gonna stay here the rest of my life. I said, you know what, I'm just gonna stay another 30 years. I, I kid you not, she knows it. That, uh, within two days, he told me I could retire. <laughs> so when you look at the devil and you say you gotta go, and you just stare at them, they're looking to see if you're flinching, if you're nervous, if you're reading from a card that Kenneth Hagin wrote, you know? <laughs> you know, the, the, the Jesus that Kenneth Hagin preached. <laughs> or your, you know, your favorite prophet, you gave $1,000 because he said if you give $1,000 to him, you'll get out of debt. I don't know if that's ever worked. I know it worked for him. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. You realize it's a Ponzi scheme. You realize it's a pyramid. Look at you all, you're like, is he really saying that? Oh yeah, the thing is, is that everybody at the bottom of the triangle gives to the top guy. Just keep it small at the top, they say, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so when God establishes you in what you're supposed to be walking in, it should be like Lester Summerall. Lester Summerall wasn't walking in any more authority than you are. Because Jesus didn't say that apostles were gonna do this, or prophets, or fivefold. He said those who believe. Th this, this is what the problem is. The, the fivefold is chosen, and they, can't, they cannot repent. The fivefold, the gifts and the callings are without repentance. That's why Paul got arrested. He should have just turned himself in many years before, but he didn't, so he's arrested. And the Lord's like, why do you keep kicking against me? He called him Lord, Paul called him Lord, but he didn't know him. Why did he call him Lord, Lord, when have I? The fivefold is set. They're set in the church for the church, but they're supposed to minister to the church, to you. They're to serve you, they're to carry your bags. They're to serve you, they, they're supposed to, the fivefold Paul said that he was at the end of the procession as an apostle. The off-scouring of the earth, he, he, the way he's being treated, he, he considered it nothing. He said, at the end of his life, he said, you know, I, the only thing I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes. That was it. Yes, Lord. He wouldn't even be on Sid Roth. Paul, we need more, more than that. Do you have anything else? We need a, like a, a couple volumes set. No, you see these people like Sid Roth are called to take people like you and me and put them in front of a camera as a bridge to present to the body of Christ that God said this and did this to an individual and through an individual to encourage you and then give you something in your hand to mentor you. Okay, but it was not for the intention of placing those individuals on a pedestal so that you want them to touch you. You don't want me to touch you. I need to get a bath right now. You, there's more in this room than there is in, on me right now. Because of all of you in this room, the corporate anointing is much stronger and greater. That's what I rely on. The, more, the more, more people that are in agreement in a room, the better. And it saves me hours of laying hands on people. I could just preach the word from the fire. I'm teaching it. I'm not spitting on you. I'm not yelling. And you're getting it. You know, I don't have to like stomp around 
and you get into the soul, and then we do the soulish music, and we do twirls, and we get the tambourines out and the harmonicas. And you make a lot of noise, and people were like jerking, and so, you know, when did Jesus ever jerk? When did, he, when did, when did the disciples put orange cones around him because he fell out? He handled himself in the spirit. He walked in authority. The devils must go. They must go. They know they must go. Do you know they must go? You establish yourself with your intimate relationship with God. You establish yourself as being part of the body that God has given you everything you need. And the devils know it. They just don't want you to walk in it. Amen? Thanks for joining me. Okay, so in closing, in that book, I, I, I offer the Geneva translation in the book a couple places to kind of show you that in that Bible, they understood a lot about what I'm talking about, whereas the King James later took a lot of that stuff out. And they killed everybody that did the translation, the Geneva translation but it was written before King James. And so it shows you in that translation, you'll, you'll get it. The devils know they have to go. So let's start in ourselves, let's start in our family, and then let's start in our church, and then we'll worry about the government because the body of Christ right now could agree as touching this one thing and all those people would lose their power to operate. And all of a sudden, things will start to uh, switch in, in judges' decisions, in investigations. They'll actually go through and not be overturned. And um, punishment will be for everybody, not just the ones they hate. You know, when you, when you see this injustice, you just wanna you just wanna max out on sugar and go into a coma. You know, you just wanna like it everything to go away. It's just too hard to bear. See, that's what Satan wants. He doesn't want us to walk in our authority. Satan doesn't want us to agree against him, because his people would lose. The Satan's power would be lost in these people's eyes. They would not be able to operate. They'd be drinking blood for nothing. Nothing would work anymore because we got to the root. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to start with a prayer school now, but before I do, I want to pray over you. But this is what, what I have done in this session is I've gone for the root in your life. I've shown you that God has already triumphed over Satan on the cross through Jesus Christ. However, we need to enforce it. We need to understand what has been given to us. All of you are amazing people. However, Satan is trying to hook you with addictions in every area, every kind of addiction, in order to serve your flesh, in order to serve false gods. You, you turn towards these things because it's unbearable. Because Satan's creating that environment where you feel it's unbearable. And what you need to do is you need to set yourself straight that you're better than that. Amen. You're royalty. Amen. You're not gonna bow to that anymore. You don't need that. Satan is trying to get you to need something you don't need. He wants to feed you poison. And he'll use anybody, even a government agency. Oh, now why are you all looking at me like that? You got you to gotta go for the root. And that is, is that the demon needs you to give him permission. Okay, so the first thing is trauma. So I break trauma in Jesus' name over your life. And then there's rejection. I break rejection in Jesus' name. Foul lion devils, you must go. Victimization. I command every evil spirit to leave that has caused victims in this room, victimization, where you have been uh, tortured, raped, I break that in Jesus' name. Every addiction must go in Jesus' name right now. 
you're gonna feel stuff, you're gonna feel stuff getting unnerved and things are gonna start leaving your soul, not your spirit your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, they're attached to that because they don't want you to be free because they know you're going to destroy the works. Jesus destroyed the works, but you're gonna enforce them. Okay, so you're forgiven, you're released. There are those who are wondering like why you lost people in your life, why you lost friends in your life, why you lost your pastor, why you lost your church. Why, why did that happen? The Lord did, the Lord allowed that to happen. There are people that you never discerned. You didn't need them in your life. There are churches that are keeping you from advancing Amen. in the spirit. You don't need that. Listen, it's better Sometimes, until you can find the right place to worship, it's better for you to just open your Bible and pray and repent and go out and feed the poor. It's better to do that for a couple months than wonder why you don't get along with your church or why your pastor is the way he is. Maybe you should look at it as this. What am I called to do? If I can't help in a church, then what can I do for God? What am I supposed to do? And just remember, being a pastor is a hard thing. But at the same time, maybe God's doing you a favor. The one thing I know that you cannot fail at is when you give and you don't expect it back. When you give, you cannot fail. No matter what it is you give, it's coming back. The other thing I know is, is that you can always go out and feed the poor. You can always go out and help somebody. You don't have to pray about it. You don't have to pray about giving. You don't have to pray about feeding the poor. The other thing is, is you can always never go wrong by studying the Word of God, meditating on it, and then the, the last one is you can never go wrong by just praying, setting yourself apart. I'm telling you, if you do these things, you'll, in no, in no time at all, you're gonna have the right friends, you're gonna have the right church, everything is gonna click with you. You just need to get on track yourself. And there are certain things you can do that don't involve helping yourself, things where you help others. I guarantee you, your help is coming quickly, very quickly. All right, so I take authority, let's pray. I take authority over every demonic force. Every root of evil is cut right now. I lay the ax to the root of every embedded evil, every snare. You foul lying devils, by the name of Jesus and by his blood, I command you, you foul lying devils, to go right now in Jesus' name and never come back. You're expelled now. Leave my people go, says the Lord. Let them go, you foul lying devils. Now look at that. There was so much, there was so much movement in the spirit, so much expulsion. There was no vomiting, no screaming. I'll get you, my pretty. No, I know your mother's name. It's like, so what? We're not talking. No, I felt something. That's what happens. See, the joy that's pent up inside of you gets to go leave and flow out. So, see, that's what happens now. And then after this tonight, you'll see the joy come in tonight. You won't be able to stop laughing. And that's because the devil's gone. And I didn't even take an offering. Okay. All right.